Today, we're creating some animated gradient borders using CSS and Framer Motion. We'll create two different variants, one with a rotating border and another with a pulsing animation. You can grab the starter code in the description to follow along. To start, I have a new Next.js project with Framer Motion installed, and I've added a simple button. Let's start by adding the border gradient to this button. So the trick here is to create a div with a gradient background that is just slightly bigger than the button and placing it behind it. So next to this button, I'm going to add a div. And on this div, I'm going to just start by giving it a position absolute, an inset of zero, and a rounded of medium just to match the border radii of the button. And just to make this work, I'm going to surround all of this in another div and apply a position relative so that the position absolute is working. OK, just to make sure this is working, I'm going to give this button a temporary opacity of zero. And let me just give this div a background, let's say, of just yellow. OK, now we can see this div is working as intended. Now, just to make it slightly bigger, I'm going to set the inset to be negative one. So for this, I'm going to add a dash and then one. So now it's a little bit bigger than the button. So if I bring the button back, you won't see it. And that's because this div is currently being put on top of the button. So I'm just going to go here and add a Z index of 10 to the button. And we'll also add a position relative as well to this button. So Z index works. And now we have this button sitting on top. OK, now let's replace this background with a gradient background. So I'm going to remove this BG yellow 400. And I'm just going to add a style tag here. And in this style tag, we'll add background. And we'll pass in this conic gradient string. And now we have this gradient order. Now you can play around with the size of this border. I'm going to change this to be exactly one pixel because I think this looks better. So now we've got the basic border gradient. Let's try and animate it. First animation I'm going to do is have this rotate around the button. So the colors will snake around the button. Now, just to see how this works, I'm just going to go here and play around with this conic gradient setting. And I can actually start this with, for example, from 90 degrees. And now if I hit save, you can see that the gradient actually rotates. I can change this to 180, 270, and back to 360. And so this is how we're going to have this gradient rotate. So let me just delete this and let's actually set up the animation. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to the top and I'm going to grab the time from Frame or Motion to time this animation. So I'm going to use the use time hook from Frame or Motion. So I'll say const time is use time. And it's an error because this now needs to become a client component to use this. Now I'm going to map this time to a rotation value that we want. So I'm going to call this rotate. I'm going to use transform from Frame or Motion as well. I'm going to take the time value and let's say I want to do it within three seconds, the whole rotation. So I'll say if we map time from zero to 3000 milliseconds, I want this to map to zero to 360 degrees. And importantly, I will set a clamp of false. So what this does is once the time gets to 3000, clamp false says keep going actually and effectively make this cyclical. So we'll keep going in perpetuity. And now I need to translate this into a value I can actually use for this background. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use transform again, call this rotating BG, use transform. And now I'm going to take the rotate value we just got, and I'm going to pass a custom function in to map this to the actual gradient text. So I'm just going to go here and copy this. And I'm going to say return back text, move to quotes. And then in front here, I'm going to add from R degrees. So we pass that rotation value in. And now finally, I'll replace this background with the rotating BG value. And we'll notice it's saying this is a motion value type string. So I need to convert this into a motion div to accept it. Import motion. OK, let's try it. I'm going to hit save. And we've got this rotating background now. So that's one way we can animate the gradient. Let's try another way, this time having a pulsing effect. So I'm just going to copy this div to make a second button. I'm going to actually reset the background back to the regular gradient here. So I'm going to copy this up here, replace it, remove this rotation value. And we don't need this to be a motion component anymore. OK, so how are we going to get this to pulse? So the trick here is going to be to make a copy of this gradient background 
and animate that one using a blur value. So I'm just going to copy this div for the gradient, paste it below. And just to see this, if I were to go down here and let's say set a filter value of, let's say blur, uh, let's say 10 pixels, you can see now this glowing effect shows up. And so what we need to do is just adjust what this blur value is to get that pulsing effect. So let's go back here to the top and let's set up the pulsing animation. So first I'm going to create a value for the pulse. Now use a spring animation for this. So I'll go to use spring, initially be value zero, and I'll pass it some values here, set damping to zero, mass of five, stiffness of 10. You can play around with these values. This is what I landed on after some testing for how the pulsing actually feels. Then we're going to take this pulse value and map it to a blur string we can pass in. So I'm going to call this pulsing BG, use transform, take pulse. Again, we'll pass a custom function taking a value and we're going to return blur our pixels. Now I can go down here and just replace this with the pulsing BG string we just got. It's giving an error because we need to make this a motion div. So if I hit save, nothing happens. And that's because originally we're explicitly saying here the value of pulse is zero to start with. So we need to actually set this value when the page loads. So I'm going to do this in a use effect. I'm simply going to say pulse.set and let's say to 10. And I'll pass an empty array to have this on initialization. So now if I hit save, there we go. It's going from zero to 10 with a pulse animation. And because it's a spring value, it has this oscillation effect. So it's coming back to zero, then going back to 10, back to zero. And by setting damping to zero, this means it will just go on infinitely. Now, one thing I think looks a little bit better is I'm going to set the opacity down a little bit on the blurred background. So I'm going to say like opacity 50. Now when I hit save, looks a little bit more muted, but I think looks a little bit more pleasant. That's it for this video. Remember to drop a like and subscribe. YouTube thinks you'll like this video on screen next, and I'll see you in the next one.